now let's learn what is fertilization so fertilization is nothing but the fusion of male and the female gamete so the fertilization in angiosperm is said to be double fertilization so what are the stages of double fertilization so first stage is that germination of pollen so once the pollen reaches the correct stigma germination of pollen starts then the growth of the pollen tube into the style the third step is that direction of the pollen tube towards the micropylar end of the ovule then the entry of the pollen tube into one of the synergies of the embryo sac the next stage is the discharge of the male gametes two gametes will be discharged into the embryo sac then syngamy syngamy is the fusion of one of the male gamete with the egg nucleus and triple fusion is um, another male gamete will fuse with the polar bodies this is what is called as triple fusion or endosperm nucleus we say so second uh, male gamete will fuse with the endosperm 2n to form 3n and that is called as triple fusion these are the stages of the fertilization so the events of fertilization starts once the pollen reaches the stigma and uh, to the entry of the pollen tube into the ovule so throughout this uh, stages uh, the pollen and pistil reinteraction takes place what is pollen pistil interaction it is nothing it is a dynamic process which involves recognition of the pollen either to promote or to inhibit its germination and growth into the style we shall see the pollen on the stigma in nature a variety of pollen may fall on the receptive stigma but all of them do not germinate and bring out the fertilization but if the pollen is compatible with stigma it germinates to form the tube this is facilitated by stigmatic fluid in the wet stigma and pellicle in the dry stigma so these two only decide the incompatibility and compatibility of the pollen through a recognition and rejection protein reaction so the self incompatibility may exist between two different uh, species we call it as interspecific and members of the same species also and that is called as intraspecific the intraspecific incompatibility is otherwise called as self incompatibility the first visible change which is seen soon after the pollen reaches the stigma is the hydration so after hydration the pollen wall proteins are released from the surface and the pollen tube germinate the whole content of the pollen um, pollen will be moving to the pollen tube and the growth will be growth is restricted to the tip of the tube all the cytoplasmic content will reach them tip region the remaining part of the pollen tube will be uh, occupied by a vacuole and which will be cut off from the pollen tube by a callus plug the extreme end of the extreme tip of the pollen appears hemispherical and transparent and this is called as cap block so as soon as this cap block disappears the growth of the pollen tube also stops now the pollen tube reaches the style pollen tube in the style so after germination of the pollen tube enters into the style from the stigma so the growth of the pollen tube in the style depend on the type of style now what are the type of style so there are three types of style so first one is hollow or open the second one is solid or closed and the third one is semi solid or half closed style let us see the first one hollow and open type it is common among the monocots so a hollow canal running from the stigma to the base of the style is present and the canal is lined by glandular canal cells and this forms the transmitting tissue of the pollen so this transmitting tissue will secrete a mucilaginous substance so the pollen tube grows on the surface of the cells lining this stylar canal so the canal is filled with the secretion and this will give the nutrition for the pollen tube and also control the incompatibility reaction between the style and the pollen tube the secretion contains carbohydrates lipids 
enzymes enzymes like esterases and acid phosphatases and also compatibility controlling proteins next type is solid style or closed type it is common in dicot plants it is characterized by the presence of the central core and central core is made up of elongated highly specialized cells and this highly specialized cell forms the transmitting tissue the transmitting tissue of the solid style is equivalent to the lining cells of the hollow style and it does the same function of that and um, the the content are also similar to the content of those cells and the pollen tube grows through the intercellular spaces of this transmitting tissue the third type is called a semi solid style or half closed type this is intermediate between the hollow style and the solid style and uh, there are difference of opinion between the nature of the transmitting tissue of the semi solid type now the pollen enters into the ovule so there are three types of pollen tube entry into the ovule the first one is called as sporogamy when the pollen enters through the micropyle directly this is called as sporogamy so when the pollen tube enters through the chalazal end then we call it as chalazogamy or when the pollen grains enters um, through the integuments then we call it as mesogamy so these are the three types of entry of the pollen tube into the ovule now let's see the entry of the pollen tube into the embryo sac so irrespective of the place where the pollen tube enters into the ovule it enters into the embryo sac only through the micropylar end and the pollen enters into the embryo sac directly into one of the synergids and the growth of the pollen tube towards the ovary or the ovule and the embryo sac is due to the presence of certain chemical substance or chemotropic substances present so the pollen tube after traveling the whole length of the style enters into the ovary locule where it is guided towards a micropyle end of the ovule by a structure called obstruator so pollen tube is directed to enter into the micropyle of the ovule by a structure is guided by a structure called obstruator so after reaching the embryo sac a pore is formed in the pollen tube and the content of the pollen tube so what is the content of the pollen tube two male nucleus the vegetative nucleus and the cytoplasm of the cell the whole content of the pollen tube will be discharged into the synergids so into which the pollen tube enters and the pollen tube stops its growth once it enters into the synergids the pollen tube does not grow beyond it and uh, in the embryo sac and the tube nucleus will disorganize now let's see the fertilization the fertilization in angiosperm is said to be double fertilization and triple fusion so navaschin and gugnad in 1898 and 1899 observed this double fertilization in plants lilium and fritillaria so they saw that both the male gametes released from the male gametophyte are involved in the fertilization so both the male nuclei involved in the fertilization they fertilize two different component of the embryo sac so one of the male gamete will fuse with the egg nucleus and this is called a syngamy so whereas the other male nuclei will fuse with the polar bodies that is 2n polar nuclei so to form the uh, endosperm so this is what is called as secondary nucleus this is what is called as secondary nucleus and triple fusion so the sec the second gamete migrate to the central and it fuses with the polar nuclei and that that is the secondary nucleus and forms a primary endosperm nucleus so 3n forms the primary endosperm nucleus so secondary male gamete fusing with the 2n forming the endosperm 3n and the first nuclei will fuse with the egg nucleus to form the zygote that is 2n the zygote will develop into the embryo so this endosperm formation forms the nutritive tissue for the growing embryo the post fertilization structure and events so there are a lot of changes that takes place in the floral pods after fertilization up to the formation of the seeds so all the changes all the events that takes place after fertilization we can call as post fertilization changes now let us see one by one 
so parts before fertilization in the flower and after fertilization how they are converted so flowers have sepals petals stamens style and stigma hope you all know where are these present in the flower so all these structures they will wither off after fertilization they will fall off ovary will become the fruit after fertilization and the ovules inside the ovary will become the seed egg cell will become zygote after fertilization after the fusion with one of the male gamete of the pollen grain the funicle that is a stalk of the ovule will become the stalk of the seed the micropyle in the ovule will become the micropyle of the seed so this opening or the hole in the seed that is micropyle will facilitate the absorption of oxygen and water during germination the new cellus will become the sperisperm so new cellus will cover the egg nucleus as well as the endosperm nucleus that will become perisperm the outer integument of the ovule will become the testa the seed coat consists of two lining the outermost is called as testa the integument outer integument of the ovule becomes testa and the inner integument become tegment that is the inner seed coat the synergid cells will degenerate secondary nucleus will become endosperm and antipodal cells also will degenerate so these are the post fertilization changes of the flower let's learn about endosperm what is endosperm or pin primary endosperm nucleus primary endosperm nucleus is the resulting cell of triple fusion so where the two polar nuclei and one sperm nucleus will fuse to form the pin or primary endosperm nucleus this pin will divide immediately after fertilization before the division of the zygote starts because the endosperm will divide and form a nutritive tissue to give the nourishment for the developing zygote or the embryo so depending on the mode of development of the pin or primary endosperm nucleus the endosperm can be classified into three they are nuclear endosperm cellular endosperm and helobial endosperm now let's see one by one what is nuclear endosperm so in the nuclear endosperm the primary nucleus undergo several mitotic division which will not be followed by the wall formation and so all the nuclei will lie freely in the inside the endosperm the free nuclear condition exist in the endosperm so this is seen in cochinea capsella and arachis so cochinea is nothing but ev god kovaikai and capsella is one of the herbal plant white flowered herbal plant and arachis you know this is groundnut arachis is groundnut so these plants will have free nuclear endosperm that is nuclear endosperm the second type is cellular endosperm here when the primary endosperm nucleus divides into two nuclei it will be immediately followed by the wall formation can you see the nucleus inside the cell wall wall formation and this kind of endosperm is seen in adoxa helianthus and scoparia so cellular endosperm is seen in helianthus that is sunflower next one helobial endosperm so helobial endosperm here once the pen or the primary endosperm nucleus divides into two nuclei the cell wall formation will takes place in one of the cell and they will move on to the opposite end 
so one to the chalazal end and one, another one to the micropylar end the nuclei which is pres- nucleus which is present in the micropylar end undergo several free nuclear division whereas the chalazal chamber may or may not divide and if it divides also it will be followed by the wall formation this kind of endosperm is seen in hydrilla and valishneria let's learn the types of seeds based on the amount of endosperm present so endosperm either me completely consumed by the embryo or it may persist in even in the seeds up to the seed stage so based on the presence of endosperm in the seed the seed may be classified into endospermous and non endospermous so endospermous seeds are otherwise called albuminous and non endospermous seeds are non albuminous so non albuminous seeds example pea groundnut beans etc and endosperm seeds example paddy coconut castor etc so the endosperm which is present in the seeds of the paddy coconut castor will assist and help in the nutrition supply during the seed germination so there is another type of uh, uh, seeds which are called as ruminant endospermous seeds so ruminant endospermous seeds here the endosperm will be present but they will be with some irregularity and unevenness in their surface and this forms the ruminate endosperm example for this is araca catechu passiflora etc now let's see what are the functions of endosperm so endosperm we know very well they become the nutritive tissue for the developing embryo that is the first and foremost function secondly the endosperm will start develop first prior to the development of the zygote because they will develop first to provide the nutrition for the developing embryo or the zygote thirdly the endosperm will regulate the development of the embryo so based on the amount and the type of endosperm present only the embryo development will fall these are the three functions of the endosperm now let's learn what is aluron tissue so aluron tissue is a connective tissue which is made up of highly specialized cells which may be present for one single layer or few layers Uh, the cells are called as parosomes and these cells have the capacity to secrete certain hydrolytic enzymes like amylase proteases etc which will help in the digestion of the stored food of the endosperm the next one is coconut coconut milk is something special uh, which becomes the basic medium nutrient medium that will induce the differentiation in the embryo to become many embryoids or many plantlets can be produced from various types of plant tissue using this nutrient medium that is coconut milk and uh, coconut water what we get from the tender coconut is the example for free nucleus endosperm and white kernel part becomes the cellular endosperm so two types of endosperm are present in the coconut itself now let's learn the development of dicot embryo so dicot embryo is studied in the example plant capsula bursa so the embryo will develop at the micropylar end of the embryo sac in the capsula plant here the zygote undergoes transverse division to form two cells the upper terminal cell and the lower basal cell so this will undergo further divisions to form the different stages of the development of the embryo so before they attain the maturity mature embryo in the seed they will undergo certain stages like globular stage which is very very important heart shaped stage etc the mature embryo in the seed will contain a radical two cotyledons and a plumule let us see what is a seed a seed is a fertilized ovule 
and it possesses the embryo inside so along with embryo it has the endosperm and the protective coat so a seed consists of an embryo endosperm and protective coat the seed may be endospermous or non endospermous so now let us learn the structure of a non endospermous seed that is a sisar seed the mature seed is attached to the fruit fruit wall by a stalk called funiculus and this funiculus will dry and disappear and it will leave a scar on the seed that region is called as hilum and below this hilum there is a small pore which is called as micropyle and this micropyle pore only will facilitate the entry of oxygen and water into the seeds during germination so the seed has a thick outer covering which is called a seed coat and seed coat here develop from the integument of the ovule the outer coat is called testa and the inner coat is tegmen here both the coats testa and tegmen are fused and we cannot separate them so laterally the cotyledons are pre- present so cotyledons are attached laterally to the embryonic axis so cotyledon stores the fo- food material for the growing embryo so when there is cotyledon the endosperm will be absent or it may be present in trays so the work done by the endosperm that is supply of food is done by cotyledon in the case of non endospermous seed the portion of the embryonal axis that is the projecting beyond this cotyledon below is called as radical that projects beyond above is called as plumule so the embryonal axis above the level of this cotyledon is called epicotyle and the embryonic axis below this cotyledon is called hypocotyle epicotyle will develop into shoot whereas hypocotyle will develop into the root now let's learn about the endospermous seed the example for it is oryza seed or rice the seed of the paddy is one seeder and it is called as caryopsis this we have learned in 10th standard itself the paddy seed remains enclosed or covered by brownish husk so husk is formed by two rows of glooms so glooms we call as bracts all this we have learned in 11th standard the seed coat forms a brownish membranous husk so inside this husk you have the grain and in the grain a bulk of endosperm is present which is the storage tissue for the embryo and this bulk of endosperm is separated from the embryo by a definite layer of epithelial tissue so the embryo is very small and it consists of a very thin shield shaped cotyledon which is called as scutellum and this scutellum is present on the lateral side of the embryonal axis the short axis which is called as plumule and short axis called radical or present in the embryo the radical is protected by a protective sheath called coleorrhiza and the shoot or the plumule is covered by a protective layer called coleoptile so scutellum will supply the food from the endosperm through this epithelial tissue so we shall see what is apomixis and amphimixis so amphimixis is nothing but a reproduction by union of two gametes the male and the female gametes we call it as amphimixis this normally happens in the flowering plants involving fertilization that is fusion of male and the female gametes the next one is apomixis where there is no union of these two gametes male and the female gametes we call it as apomixis this term was first introduced by winkler in 1908 he it defined it as the reproduction which does not involve meiosis and syngamy so meiosis is reduction division sperm mother cell or the megaspore mother cell have to undergo meiosis to produce a haploid gametes which will not take place in apomixis so apomixis according to winkler is 
the reproduction that does not involve meiosis and syngamy syngamy what is syngamy it is nothing but the union of the two gametes now maheshwari in 1950 he defined apomixis he, uh, he actually classified apomixis into two as recurrent and non recurrent so all these are nothing but only the terms are new but whatever we have learned about the asexual reproduction sexual reproduction only they are termed with new biological terms here so maheshwari 1950 he classified this apomixis into recurrent and non recurrent and this non recurrent is nothing but the haploid embryos so uh, after meiosis uh, gametes are formed which are haploid which will contain haploid means only n number of one set of chromosome only present and without any fusion of the gametes each haploid cells will be capable of producing an egg one without fertilization the embryos are produce and that is what is called as non recurrent apomixis whereas recurrent apomixis can further be classified into vegetative reproduction what we have learned in the first then a gamospermy so vegetative reproduction various methods of vegetative reproduction how do the plants propagate through various paths like bulb bills bulbs etc we have already learned in, in the first part of the lesson similarly agamospermy what is it it refers to the process by which embryos are formed eliminating meiosis and syngamy there won't be syngamy or meiosis according to the winkler's definition Uh, the a gamospermy definition lies gamospermy is a reproduction in which there is no meiosis and syngamy without which the embryos are formed and this is again classified into adventive embryo diplospore and apospore so what is adventive embryo so when an embryo arises directly from a diploid spore phytic cells before meiosis without meiosis a diploid sporophytic cells give rise to an embryo we call it as sporophytic budding or gametophytic phase is completely absent in this case and this is what is called as adventive embryony so example for this citrus and mangifera so what is diplospore so diplospore is otherwise called as generative apospore here the embryo sac will be diploid in condition which will be formed from the megaspore mother cell itself without undergoing meiotic division this is what is called as diplospore so example for this is eupatorium and erva then what is apospore so apospore megaspore mother cell may undergo meiosis and form four megaspores but in that the new cellular cells become activated and develop into a diploid embryo sac and this type of reproduction is called as apospore which is otherwise called as somatic apospore also example parthenia what is polyembryony poly means many and embryo means many embryos occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed is called as polyembryony and this is first reported in certain oranges by anton von leeuwenhoek in 1719 and this polyembryony also can be divided into four categories based on the origin of the embryo the first one is cleavage embryony polyembryony which is reported in orchids so cleavage is nothing but after the zygote formation zygote will divide mitotically to form many cells and this each of the cell may produce many embryos and that is cleavage polyembryony in the next type we can see formation of the embryos from the cells other than the egg cells so other cells like synergids and antipodes also if they become embryos so that comes under the second category so example and this is astrolocia and almus endosperm also become emb- embryo in the case of balanophora the development of more embryos from mmc so mmc is nothing but a megaspore mother cell so sometimes this megaspore mother cell divide into many cells and each of these cells will give rise to an embryo 
द फोर्थ टाइप इज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द एम्ब्रियो फ्रॉम द न्यू सेलर टिश्यू द सेल्स ऑफ द न्यू सेलर मे गिव राइज टू मेनी एम्ब्रियोज दिस इज सीन इन सिट्रस फ्रूट अप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस पॉली एम्ब्रियानी वी कैन प्राक्टिकली वी इट इज अप्लाइड टू प्रोड्यूस सम हेल्थियर एंक्वेंस इन द केस ऑफ सिट्रस सिट्रस फ्रूट द न्यू सेलर टिश्यू many embryos are produced in the new cellular tissue which becomes uh, more viable than the uh, egg ones which are produced from the normal embryo cell similarly uh, vir- viral free embryos are also produced with the help of the embryos which are derived from other source than the egg cells next topic is 1.9 that is parthenocarpy so parthenocarpy it is nothing but the fruit formation without fertilization so we know that after fertilization ovary becomes a fruit and the ovule becomes the seeds but in some cases the fruit like structures may develop from the ovary without fertilization and these forms the parthenocarpic fruit example for parthenocarpic fruit banana grapes and papaya So in Nitz in 1963 he has classified this parthenocarpy into the following types the first one is genetic parthenocarpy so this here in this parthenocarpy arises due to mutation and certain genetic changes in the plant itself and this kind of genetic changes genetic parthenocarpy is seen in citrus and cucurbita second type is environmental parthenocarpy sometimes the plants are induced to produce parthenocarpic fruit because of the environmental conditions like frost fog temperature difference high and low temperature uh, they also induce this parthenocarpy in the um, some of the plants so uh, this they have checked uh, uh, the low temperature for 3 to 19 hours for a plant may induce parthenocarpic fruit in the plant the next type is called as chemically induced parthenocarpy so this can be induced the like parthenocarpy in a plant can be induced chemically by applying certain chemicals like auxins and gibberellins when these are applied on the flowers of the plant they are developing into a fruit and and so the chemically they are induced to produce the fruit so example for this chemicals are auxins and gibberellins so these are the types of parthenocarpy what are the significance of parthenocarpy we know seedless fruits are pot and very great in a significance we like to have uh, seedless grapes than the seeded grapes so they become great significance in horticulture and these fruits are of commercial importance they are costlier than the normal seeded fruits uh, it is easy to produce more jams and jellies also fruit drinks etc from the seedless fruits and uh, we will get high pro- proportion of edible portion in the fruit when their seeds are absent in them so these are the significances of parthenocarpy so that's all for this first lesson of botany children thank you Thank you.